Hi, my name is Lars Zimmermann and I'm going to explain to you Open Source Circularity. I'll start with the second part, Circularity or Circular Economy. If you search for it right now, it is likely you will find this image. Let's take a closer look on the right side. The right side is about physical objects and physical products. The circular economy tries to keep them as long as possible in the economy by having them circulate through different cycles. The first cycle is about repairing. Imagine you have a little scooter. If something breaks, it would be easy for you to find out what it is and fix it. The second cycle is also about prolonging the life of your scooter. But in this cycle, a service provider is involved. The service provider offers maintenance or more sophisticated repair work. The third cycle involves a manufacturer. It is for work that requires a factory. You could, for example, replace large parts of your scooter or take them out and reuse them in another machine. This process is called refurbishing. And the fourth cycle is for all products that can be repaired, reused or refurbished anymore. It is about recycling. This cycle also in most cases involves a factory that can melt down the materials and provide them as raw materials for new things. So the fenders of your scooter made from aluminium are melt down and turned into aluminium profiles or whatever. So I think it became obvious that the circular economy is a design challenge. Things have to be designed to be fit for these cycles, to be repairable, reusable and recyclable. But next to this we need services and collaboration patterns that enable these cycles. Let's have a closer look. As you know, we live on a big and diverse planet with huge distances. We live in a globalized world with a global economy. So maybe something is produced here to be shipped to here, to be sold to here, to be used here. Then after a while it breaks and needs some repairing. Then through a second hand market it goes to here. And the new owners take it on vacation to here. It is some kind of circular economy paradox. The easier it is to repair, reuse and refurbish the products, the more complex and unmanageable become their life and distribution patterns. A complexity explosion that requires a lot of information. There are two ways to tackle this. The first is we have only one or a small handful of corporations left that can reach across the globe and that share all information just internally. And they have a big communication system installed where each product knows at all time where it is and what it does. Each thing has a digital twin communicating with the big guys. If each product in your house knows that it is there, it is possible for someone to know everything you have in your house at any given moment. It is nothing less than a huge surveillance or tracking system for your life. Maybe you like this idea. Maybe you work on it right now with or without knowing. And there's a second way to tackle the circularity complexity problem. It begins with realizing that there is a flaw in the diagram I showed you earlier. Look at the middle part. It talks about a provider and a manufacturer. It is singular. Well, on a complex planet and in a diverse economy, it should be, of course, manufacturers and providers, plural. So here is a fixed version of the diagram. But the question then still is how to make circularity work? Two more essential things. A. The design. Pick simple designs. Designs everyone can understand really quickly. Like this little toy here. And here is a lamp we made with it. Everyone can use it. It is as simple as Lego and as reusable as nuts and bolts. Another thing for design you can do is use only open standards and only common widespread tools. Make something that is so simple, maybe even DIY looking, but still incredibly beautiful, so people want to have it in their homes. There's a full list of these design principles collected here on this poster called Make It Circular. It is available in eight languages so far, including Chinese, Spanish, Russian, German and others. But of course, it is pretty unlikely that everything can be so simple. So for this, we need to 
Share information. Make sure the information necessary to repair, reuse, refurbish and recycle an object is accessible wherever the object goes. Or imagine the following story. Let's say you have a scooter factory here in Italy and someone on the other side of the globe in China has a repair question. Sure, the guy in China could call you and you pick up the phone and guide him step by step through the process. That's not going to happen because the costs are too high for both of you. Deal with time zones, language barriers, uh, maybe licenses. Invest the time on the phone just to repair one scooter. No, the information must be freely available everywhere, anytime. It must be available in editable formats under open licenses. Why in editable formats? Editable means that you share documents that can be modified, enable people to remix. Why? Imagine someone repairs the scooter or modifies it, updates it with new parts. It must be easy to update the documentation as well and pass it along with the scooter so all future owners know what is in there now and are enabled to circulate these parts also. And you, as the producer, might see this documentation and draw some inspiration from it for future circular designs. This is what people call open innovation. And it requires that these documents are shared under open licenses. For example, one of these Creative Commons licenses. Open licenses are important to enable people to work with your documents. Without an open license, everyone who shares your documents or modified versions of it commits a crime. This is how our law works, almost everywhere. To fix this and to enable decentralized collaboration for circularity, you will need to use open licenses. Ah, and of course, don't file patents or design rights that would block these decentralized open forms of collaboration. Open available documentation in editable formats shared under open licenses enables the collaboration and communication we need for a true sustainable circular economy that is not in danger of becoming a big surveillance and control machine. And by the way, there is an established name for this. It is called open source. And in the world of software, it works pretty well. But for the world of physical objects, it is more complicated. We still have to figure out a bunch of things. But this is also true for circular design, where we also still have to figure out a lot of things. And the interesting thing is, for both, for circularity and for openness, you face the same questions. You start to think about enabling ecosystems. When you want to make a circular product, you need to make sure that someone, someday, somewhere, can repair it, reuse it, refurbish parts or recycle everything. You need to think about how to enable unknown future actors. And that is the very same with open source. In open source, you share things in a way that enables others to not just consume your product, but to do creative, constructive work with it. You enable an ecosystem of unknown actors. And the open source pioneers have figured out a lot of ways to do this we can learn from and build upon for circularity. And yes, this includes business models, ways to make an income with open source products. But for this, there are other videos here. Before I sum up, I just want to mention that when things are open, it is also easier for people to get involved at all, to invent, use and spread new circular solutions. Openness speeds up innovation. There are organizations working on this. You can get involved with them. I think it might be worth your time. Because open source circularity, that sounds like a world worth living in. It is a world that invites our creativity and intellect. A world that supplies us with what we need. Because if we don't burn resources or turn them into garbage, there should be enough. It is a world that preserves nature and our biosphere. And it is a world that will provide us with a lot of free time. Because I did not mention it, for a circular economy we also need to consume much less. Therefore, less production is needed, which frees up our time. And it is a world where we are enabled to express our freedom and are not surveilled or controlled by large companies using the products around us. An open source circular economy, well, that sounds like a pretty convincing positive utopia to me. Okay. My name is Lars Zimmermann and you can invite me or my colleagues if you want to hear more or do a project together. Let's invent this together. Hmm? Yeah, I wanted to end on a positive note. Yeah, sure. I could have said assume.
when climate change is really kicking in and the world is shaken and everything is blown up constantly and has to be rebuilt and rebuilt again, wouldn't you want the information and designs how to do that quickly out of the remains be freely accessible and easy to use so we can help ourselves and aid each other with open circularity? We better develop those tools before we really need them.